hey, hey, what is going on, Comic Book Familia? We are live with my like third or fourth favorite show that I do with Peter. You know? <laughs> so this is a newer one, you know, where we ask each other five questions and one bonus question. But how's it going, Peter? Not bad at all, mate. Not bad at all. Looking forward to this. Uh, I've picked some. I've picked some interesting questions for you this time. I think. I'm gonna put you through your paces. Yeah, when uh, Peter and I put the questions in, we try not to look at them, you know, but it's kind of hard, but I try not, I don't remember the questions you even asked, so I just, you know, put them in really quick and, you know, try yeah. to get them in uh, the right order, but uh, Peter, you're not going to want to hear this, but it's a great day in San Diego right now. It's oh, nice it's and sunny. Stuffed. We used to do that shtick that I used to make, you know, always make, yeah. you know, but it's nice right now in San Diego, but you'd be happy to hear we may be getting some more rain. So, Good. I'm um, pleased. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. pleased. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's miserable over here. I think it's wet and rainy and blah. Just but you always up. look so cheerful. So that's it's a good just thing. my natural, my yeah. natural cheerful disposition. Yeah. yeah. But before we go any further, let's look at the comments. See if anybody's watching us here. And who do we have? We have Fuzzy. Fuzzy, I'm gonna have to send you a gift. <laughs> you know, so. But Fuzzy's here. I need cheering up. Entertain us, lads. We hope to, Fuzzy. We're each pick five questions. We're gonna ask each other. And uh, one uh, bonus question each. So you are ready to go? Yeah, yeah, sure, man. Sure. Okay, let's get this going. Oh, Fuzzy or whoever's here too. Uh, let me get back to the comments. If you want to answer these questions too, you know, please feel free to answer. You know what your comments are too. Uh, let me get up the first one here. Okay. So this is my first question. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So if you could bring back one TV show, what would it be? <laughs> no pressure that's a, that's a that's a tough one that's a tough one um okay that's okay um but i'm picking two i'm gonna kind of do one okay i'm picking two i'm gonna go one kind of geeky and one not so geeky that i just miss so my my geeky one is um x files i used to love the x files don't know if you ever watched that i've uh, never seen it you think it'd be right up my alley but i just I, oh, it just man. passed me by. I just never saw it. I know? love it. I absolutely love it. But I want, I want a kind of a reboot or whatever. And it, it, for me, it just needs to be creature of the week. Do you know what I mean? So X Files started off from really strong. It's basically about this FBI agency where they're exploring, you know, weird and wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. And the episodes were kind of split between. Um, creature of the week kind of features where it's just a monster or is something that they're investigating okay. and then a longer narrative about aliens and ufos and abductions yeah. and things like that that was fine to start with but it got so convoluted and confused and it did me head in i was much happier was just with with monster of the week um and you've got your two main characters Mulder and scully one of yeah. them is who's a believer and will believe everything and the other one who's kind of a non-believer and tries to disprove everything with science so that kind of show i absolutely love um and it had some great the first couple of seasons had some great creepy creatures and monsters and things like that uh, so yeah it's well well worth a watch and then my my other pick my non-geek pick i'm a massive fan of an old medical series called house i don't know if you oh, ever saw house i i remember it but i never yeah. saw it <laughs> you know I, never I think you've it. never you've never lived me you've never <laughs> honestly house is brilliant it's um a great British actor, Hugh Hugh Laurel, I think he's called, and he basically plays a, um, a super intelligent medic. Yeah, I mean, super intelligent medic whose department is basically when nothing else can, no answers can be found, when nobody else can solve the case, you go to his department. But kind of the twist is that he's um, he's addicted to um, opioid painkillers oh, medication. I didn't know that. Yeah, and he's uh, he's a grumpy, horrible, nasty piece of work, and he's just superb. He's hilarious in it. So yeah, so I, I love House. Oh, and Fuzzy man, Fuzzy Hannibal. Yeah, Hannibal. I want Hannibal back as well. I cannot just pick one from that ridiculous question. Can't just have one. There's so many. So we have a Fuzzy thing commenting on the weather. That's his high blood pressure. You can That's see nothing to do color. with the weather. <laughs> we have James. Hey, oh, get James on next time with us. You yeah, know, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. So you know, he hasn't been on my channel much. You know, maybe see if James, James would love it. I'm sure James would yeah, love it. James, I'll invite you next time, next month. See if you want to do it with us. Uh, but he, I remember this show. He Reaper. It was just Never one year. Seen that. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that show. It was funny. And uh, this, oh my God, The Sopranos or Hannibal. I've never seen either of those. <laughs> so, 
never seen Sopranos, <laughs> never seen Sopranos. Um, but Hannibal, absolutely. Hannibal, if you've not seen it, everyone, it's, yeah. it's it's basically a Hannibal Lecter story, but it is so beautifully done. And Mads Nicholson plays the kind of the, the, the title character, and he's he's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. I love it. Love it. Uh, let me see. We have one more from Fuzzy. Did you ever see Nurse Jackie? No. Nope. Nurse yeah, I, drug I, I, oh, wow. Yeah, no. I heard about it, Fuzzy. I, think I watched one episode maybe, but I never got back to it. But I heard great things about it. They said it was very good. So my pick, it's a comedy. And when this show went off the air, it just really bummed me out. And it's Cheers. Oh, you know, yeah. I really love that show. I was like, oh, my God, it's such a funny show. I mean, I know all shows have to end, so to speak, except for The Simpsons. You know, but I just, that show, just Sam and all everybody else and Woody, you know, Norm. You just I just went, oh, my God, I want to go to Boston. I want to go to that bar. You know, I just really, really enjoyed that show. That used to be Friday night viewing for us back in back in the UK. I remember yeah. when I was a wee nipper. Friday nights were our treat night when I was at home with my mum and dad. And yeah. We'd go to the shop and get some chocolate bars and things like that. And we'd sit and we'd watch Cheers. And I think it was um, not Dallas. What was the other one? What, what was the other ridiculous American thing? Dynasty. Dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> Dyn- Crystal Clarendon and things I like that. Watch yeah. Book too, man. Yeah. I just hooked on those shows, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next question. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we move on, Efren, okay. I'm going to turn that question on you. What show should have ended long ago? Which show do you think went on too long and we should have pulled the plug? I'll start with straight off with my favourite answer, Lost. What a load of crap. Yeah. It just prattled on and on and on. Are yeah. there any that you think just pushed it too far? I love Lost when it first came out. It was like, you know, they, they have a cool... Um, water cooler you know gossip i don't know if you heard of that you know so another one for me was heroes it started off with a bang but i was like oh my gosh it went downhill even the reboot wasn't that good i was like oh guys you know you guys blew it completely forgot about that actually from because i mean i remember the first season or two being spot on with the guy who plays spock in star trek kind of oh, yeah. the down and things and that was really good yeah, yeah and then yeah. i just lost all hope with it i didn't understand yeah. what the hell was going on yeah, we have uh, Hector showed up. Hey, thanks for showing up, Hector. Hi, Hector. Uh, so, yep. Are you ready for question yeah. number two? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is from you. Is digital art real art? Yeah. So, I, I, this was something I propped in my head the other day. I was talking to some pals about, about art styles and things like that. And um, a friend of mine, I asked if you would do as a sketch cover. Not someone in the YouTube community, a guy I've known since since school. Um, and he's a talented artist. He illustrates kids' books. So it's his paid job. And I said, oh, if I send you a comic book cover, will you, a blank cover, will you do as a, a, a cover? And he said, no, because all of his artwork was digital. And it just made us think, well, I don't, I don't understand how that works. Um, yeah. And it started making, think, making us think some of my favourite artists at the moment or digital artists so you know the guy who does um something epic that's all digital art it's not hand-painted art and, and i don't know it it was a question i wanted to pose do you still think that a digital created art book is still proper art or is it cheating in some way okay uh, i'm gonna sound old here but in digital art they still have to draw it by hand correct but it's on a computer so it's a, it's it's really interesting if you ever watch there's some great videos of um, Todd McFarlane yes. using his his digital kind of art pad. Yes. And it, it is hand drawn, but it, there's ways that, like you fill sections in and it draws the lines for you. Like yes, okay, I've seen it. Okay. So it is it is I don't know. I just I don't I don't know enough about it really myself. I was just interested in your thoughts. Um then yes. Um if it's if he's if this pen to paper so to speak or pen to pad and it's his signatures you can add stuff digitally you know like colors or erase stuff yeah. so i think it still is yeah you know but i think an art will be lost what you mentioned earlier he says he doesn't do commissions i think that art's going to be lost yeah. yeah i think i changed my views i think i changed my views slightly on this recently because i literally fell in love with them um, with simon krinsky's Kr- his name wrong yeah. artwork on something epic and blood commandment yeah. and that artwork is just absolutely amazing you know st- stunning um so i kind of don't care how it's created do you know what i mean yeah. um 
but yeah so I, I think i think digital art is just for me personally it's the new way of drawing it's just a yeah. new tool um, yeah so yeah I, th I think i personally think it's real art it's progress you know that's what yeah. they're doing now you know yeah. let's see we have uh, let's look at the comments before we go on to the next question oh here we go by hector um i can vouch for digital art being real i draw on an ipad and the basics are the same okay thank you we still have to actually draw in color. Only more tools are available all in one place. Cool. That's interesting. And Hector, that's interesting. So so can you, so like I say, my mate, because he draws predominantly well, all on pad, he finds it hard to go back to, to what our class is traditional drawn now. So is that the same for you? Do you find it, can you switch between the two different mediums or do you favor one over the other? And if you do, send us a picture of both. I like yeah. to see the difference, you know, follow, yeah. you, go, you can check us out on Instagram, send us a picture of if you do digital art and if you do just regular drawing, I would like to see the comparisons between the yeah. two, you know, that'd be pretty cool. And we have one more here from Fuzzy. Digital art doesn't bother me. AI art is a different story. Hang on to that thought. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Good question. And let's go on to the next one. All right. This is mine. You ready? Yeah. Imagine you're creating a time capsule, a time capsule for future comic collectors. Which three comics would you include and why? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. Um okay. Right. Easy answer for me then, everyone. So I would want to include two of my favorite stories to show the 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 um the quality you can get from the big two. So I would go with something like um, Marvels by Alex Ross. Okay. Um, have you read Marvels? Yes. So telling the kind of the story of the, good choice. the birth of the Marvel Universe, I think that's a yeah. great, great point, classic artwork. And in terms of if it's a time capsule, people kind of encountering these characters, it's a beautiful jumping on point for people to realise you know, how these characters all started off in the Marvel Universe and the Marvel world. Um, to kind of do the opposite of that, I would obviously, and if you're playing Triple G Bingo, um, I would obviously say Kingdom Come. Uh, that's a lovely end point. Again, stunning artwork by Alex Ross, and it shows you the fall from grace of the DC heroes, And because I, I absolutely love that. And then my third choice, I'd want to show how good non-mainstream comics are. So I'd probably go something like either Stray Dogs, because I think that's an amazing story, or I would go something epic um, by Simon, because I think it's just uh, something epic for me shows you that comic books, and I mean this is no disrespect to anybody, but comic books can be not just for kids, they can be intelligently written, emotional, beautiful stories, and that's exactly what some, something epic is. You know, it's a stunning story, um, and it shows really I think, what the best of comics can be. I like your choices because you stayed away from the big books that we would probably normally pick off oh, first Superman or first Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but these are books that also you like sounds like your favorites too. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. that being said, I this is one of our favorites, and I just thought of it as Camelot three thousand. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's this book came out, I think, at least over thirty years ago now. You know, yeah. basically, um I I'm always telling you to say it, but you can say it better better than me, Peter, but it's when King King Arthur comes back, yeah, at England's greatest need. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's a it's a twelve issue series. I, I highly recommend reading it. It's Camelot three thousand. Uh, I'm very surprised they've never done anything with that since. You know, I know. I love that storyline. You mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna go back and read it again. You know, it's yeah. it's it's easy read. You know, it just goes by quick. I think another one would be um, I've always liked this storyline. More mainstream is um, Days of Future Past. Uh, with uh, Wolverine, you know, and the yeah, X Men, yeah, you know, yeah. and Kitty Pride went back in time, you know, those were almost like the jumping point for crossover or showing, you know, future events in in uh, Marvel or X Men history. I think that's yeah. when it started it all. You know, it's going crazy now. What they do is so often, but the original Days of Future Past. Gosh, I'm trying to think. Oh, okay, this book, I love this book when it first came out. It's an indie book. It's something that's killing the children. Yeah. When that book first came out, I had a feeling it was going to be a hit by Image Comics. And uh, it's still ongoing. It's gone. That book's been around for three years now, three yeah, or four yeah, years. Yeah. You know? So yeah, those would be my three books. You know, Good picks. Yep. Good picks. I like them. We have a 
answer here from Hector about drawing uh, from the previous question. He says, I switch back to traditional paper back and forth. And each time it feels different at first, but then you get used to it pretty quickly. Cool. Yeah. That's if you can ever send us pictures for comparison, we'd love it. And, uh, let's see here. We have one from uh, Ballard yeah. Art. is superb on that one. Bolin. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It is. You're right. It's absolutely amazing. He's an incredible artist, actually. He's yeah. uh, Brian Bolin. He's stunning. Absolutely stunning. We have this one from Fuzzy. And yes, I've seen this already. Oops. Yeah. Uh, it says, did you see someone is selling a 9.9 .9 giant size X-Men comic? That yeah. brings up a lot of questions with me. I'm I always thinking that CGC just wants to do it because they're trying to get pop, you know, momentum back. And we're talking about a book that's over 50 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know. You know, brought up a lot of questions with me. I absolutely agree, Efren. I th I, it, isn't, it strange, isn't it strange that just as CGC yeah. are pushing 9.9s and 10s, all of a sudden you get one of the biggest books of all time? just happens to hit a 9.9 .9. i mean it'd be interesting to know how many other 9.9 .9 giant size x-men number ones are on the census already do you know what yeah. i mean is this a common book that they find at 9.9 .9? it's a square bound yeah. book so yeah. the spines on those are normally horrendous yeah so yeah it's a bit uh, fishy yeah. that's that'd be another question for peter show on saturday they can yeah. delve into it longer <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see who's next year uh okay this is your question which book needs a hard reset? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that question? Yeah, so what I mean by a hard reset, Efren, is bin everything that's gone before and just start from fresh. Wow. So so you would, you say, using Spider-Man for an example, you would just say, right, we'll end it with this particular run and then restart the entire series. A bit like Ultimate Universe. Do you know what I mean? Just restart it, start telling it again. And they can do whatever they want to it. Anything they want. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's a tough question. I might have to think about it for about 24 hours and we'll see <laughs> you to tomorrow. Uh, a hard reset. I'm trying to think. God, I don't know of anything that would be a hard reset. So, I mean, I'll go. go Heck, let me see. Heck, Maybe, let me think about it. Heck does pinched mine. Um, Heck does pinched mine. X Men. Absolutely X Men. It is so much convoluted backstory okay. and and it's so bloody confusing and the lines don't meet up and all the rest of it that i think x-men just needs to okay, just I get you now wash the hands of the previous storylines and just start again um, as for you saying restarting in june i have to say the the cover artwork didn't particularly get as excited but i'm 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 hopeful that it's going to be it's going to be good but yeah, X Men I think definitely just needs to just bin the past and start again, and do something totally different for me. I mean, for me, X Men was never more exciting than when they did the Age of Apocalypse storyline. Yeah, just stopped everything and then restarted with completely different take on the characters. I think you kind of need to do that. That said, that said, the recent Ultimate X Men by Peach Momoko did note for us; it left us cold. Um, but yeah, but I think X Men need to a reset. You know what? I'm not. I'm not trying to cop out, but I think I'm going to choose X Men also. There are so many characters, but if they did a hard reset, I mean, it would. I would almost like just to see them with the original five X Men and maybe Wolverine because he's so popular. Yeah. But just restart it from the beginning. Wow, that that would take a lot of guts. You know? They've done it. They've done it before. You know. Yeah. And I mean, really, you know, you could argue, couldn't you, that the New Fifty Two was a complete hard reboot of the entire DC universe. Um, and some of that worked, some of it fell flat in its face, but yeah. Um, as we got some James Zank asking, um, I thought X Men is getting one, yes, they are, you know. Yeah. So, um, Superman, I don't think enough new readers are attracted to him as a character, absolutely fuzzy. So, I, I got into Superman, I've always quite liked the character of Superman, but I got into Superman Craigie, I can't remember what. what what age it was but maybe 10 15 year ago where they pretty much did a reset and they got some big name artists and writers on the comics um and they restarted it and it was superb absolutely superb um but yeah superman's a character that i think people just keep away from because a bit like spider-man because they think there's so much history and background to it he's a bit it's a bit intimidating to try and pick it up and jump in it i i, I found one um he's there's been so many reiterations of this character and actually he was a they put him back to a teenager once um it's iron man tony stark yeah. you know it just 
he's been going through so much. He got that ex- extremist thing in him too. Yeah. So I'm not even sure where he's at with that now. You know, he died. He came back. He became a teenager again. Yeah. You know, I think I'd like to see a reset on him. That know? was a massive flop, wasn't it? So that yeah. was, um, was it called <laughs> The Crossing, I think? And it was revealed that Iron Man, the Iron Man we know and love, had been working with Kang the Conqueror all of his time as an Avenger. He was always a yeah. bad guy. Um, not yeah. mind control or anything like that. He was just a bad guy. Yeah. Um, so they replaced him with a younger version of him from the time screen, time screen and it was just horrendous, absolutely yeah. horrendous. I don't think it lasted very long. No, it didn't. You know, so um, James is asking a question here. Did Peter unironically say crikey? <laughs> Did it? Crikey. <laughs> crikey, chief. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Next question here. Okay, this is a, I think everybody's been, always been asked this question. If you had a chance to go to one Comic-Con, one you've never been to, which one would it be? Easy, San Diego. San Diego, huh? And that's yeah. not, I have to say, without getting soppy, that's not necessarily for the con, friend. That's just to come and spend time yeah. over with you in your neck of the woods and have a look yeah, around. Yeah, it would be awesome. Like that. Yeah. Hopefully that yeah. could come true one of these years, you know. Yeah. So. No, I'd, I'd, in all honesty, I'd love to do one of the big American comic cons. Yeah. And San Diego is the one that kind of calls to us the most, I think. Um, since I've been, you know, obviously I live in San Diego, so I've been to San Diego and I've been to Emerald Con in Seattle. Um, there's C2E2 in Chicago and New York Comic Con. Um, uh, but I think I would pick New York Comic Con for that. You know, I've never, yeah. you know, I've been, I haven't been to New York in decades. Yeah. And uh, I think I would like to go that one, compare them, you know, see how they, uh, compare to each other, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's look at the comments. If you guys see what you have to say, uh, Oh, this is a previous question. Uh, it says, after Avengers Twilight, I'm more interested in James Stark. Oh, now then Tony. Okay. Great character. That's So that's Tony and the Wasp's son. Yeah. Um, he was a bit of a bad guy in Avengers Twilight. but Oh, yeah, Fuzzy, yeah. Fuzzy's right. He's a really interesting character. So, yeah, I want to see more of him, Fuzzy. Uh, San Diego, but but would be getting... Cutting. cutting that. Upsetting, that means, Efren. Would be oh, upsetting. Okay. <laughs> um, cutting, not to get... Onto at least one Hall H panel. Hall H Saturdays, you're gonna have to spend the net the previous day there, and you'll be missing out on a lot of other stuff. You That's see, I game. have to say, that, I mean, James yeah. is a, a younger, fitter man than myself. Well, he's younger. Um, yeah. I, I don't know that I could go all the way to San Diego and spend a day standing in a queue. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I kind of feel I'd be missing out too much. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But I've done it. And, you know, I've missed out on a lot of things, but it was so worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Once we got in there, I got this is worth it. You know, there's just no comparison. Well, you, we could leave James in the lane and me and you could go and have a look around and come back and just. Well, see, that's what we do. You know, yeah. we usually get a group of people and we take turns, you know, like two or three hour shifts and other people could do other stuff. And then we come back because in the evening is when they give away the, uh, like these special bracelets, you know, like yeah. and that's what you need to get in. Yeah. You know, so, but it, it is worth it. And I've done it. I've slept on cement, so I can say that, you know, but I've done it. Um, we have dead man. Uh, thanks for joining us for mostly unused characters. I've always loved the metal men, Wish they would bring them back as they were originally inc- including nameless. Yeah. Metal men is DC, correct? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I've not read a lot of metal men to be honest. I've read bits and bobs, yeah. but, um, but the pretty cool characters. And uh, James is commenting on San Diego. I think Pete means literally just leave me there the whole time. I do. I do. That's yeah. exactly what I mean. Yeah. Exactly right. You're young. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get on to the next question here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dude, these are tough questions. I'm putting you through your paces today, friend. I'm putting you through your paces. Yeah. This is you Peter. can't have any of the ones that you've had previously. Oh, my gosh. Erase a storyline or character. Oh, it would be okay. Okay. My erase, because I just didn't, it was just really sad is when they killed off uh, Supergirl in uh, Infinite Earths. You know, that scene, yeah, yeah. I read it recently too. It was just so tragic. Oh, you know, no, I, I know she came back, you know, but um, that one, it would be that choice of, you know, not killing off Supergirl. That one, I go, wow, that really hurt me. You know, I was like, damn, man, this is brutal. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting because I, I, I mean, I, I love that storyline. That that's the one that yeah. sticks in my mind. I was sure, Efren, knowing you as I do, that you were going to go for Hank Pym beating the Wasp. I thought you'd get rid of. Something I just like that. it just popped in my head so quick. So yeah. I know you know I wasn't going to spend you know hours. That's yeah. another one. I hated that. You know. Yeah. yeah. 
so uh, for me it's it's probably um secret empire the the whole cap oh, turned out yeah. to be a hydra agent i just hated it i just hated everything about that um and yeah I, I didn't enjoy that that version of them at all to be honest but I think there've been some stinkers of storylines in the in the past. Each of them kind of forms the characters, I guess, and turns them into what we know and love. But another one that I think I, I kind of would erase is um, when Barbara Gordon was shot by the Joker and became mm -hmm. the Oracle. I loved that concept of the character, but then they've kind of gone back on that now, and now she's back to being Batgirl. I think. Yes. It, as horrible as it sounds, I think they should have just kept her as she was i think it was a really powerful character a powerful kind of image of of you know a disabled person being crucial to the team and crucial to the, the makeup and everything and i think she was powerful and a more meaningful character as oracle than she is as batgirl to be honest well she's kind of went back to oracle now she's oh, doesn't right. do batgirl as much yes but she did have an implant put in so she can walk again but she's kind of behind the scenes now she's helping out robin and but it's not not helping him out as uh, Batgirl, helping him out as Oracle. And I had a little bit more time to think. Hank Pym, when he was, when uh, Ultron, when they melded together, yeah, I stupid. hated that. You know, I was like, oh my God. You know, he's one of the founding members of the Avengers. Give him some, you know, but he's back now, supposedly, you know, in yeah. an Avengers book, you know. Yeah. But, he, was, he was in Avengers Incorporated, which was actually a really good it. series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Another one um, that, that I would raise oh my mind's just gone blank i had another one there but i've forgotten it straight away that's what happens when you get old isn't it yeah well let's yeah. look at the comments maybe you'll remember uh hector oh wow clone saga the original one okay yeah. Yeah. wow good choice uh fuzzy he says i'd erase harley quinn i'm sick of being yeah. bored of her now. wow I'm completely get rid of her jeez i am i'm the same fuzzy i'm bored of her now this one i agree with dead man i didn't like this um Erase the aging up of Jonathan. Yeah. He used to be the same age as uh, Robin. Damien. And, uh, yeah. yeah, Damien. And then they, you know, aged him up. Yeah, I didn't like that either. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call, actually. Oh, that's like two that. for uh, see you later, uh, Harley yeah. Quinn. He's uh, dead man agrees with Fuzzy. Yeah. And let's see what we got here. Um, Batgirl Nightwing may be getting married in the future. That's where that storyline is going. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay. And uh, James says, that uh, makes sense, arch right? fuzz. <laughs> I've remembered, I've remembered. Okay. And this might be an unpopular one, but I would erase the whole Barry Allen coming back storyline. Again, wow. he was more powerful as a deceased character. And okay. I loved I loved Wally West. I loved the story of this was a, a sidekick and then a Teen yeah. Titan who did well and you know fitted into his a bit like Nightwing's story. He became his own character, his own version of the hero and surpassed really his mentor in, in many ways. And then DC just bollocked all of that up and changed it when they brought Barry back. And then Wally's never really recovered. He's got a new series out at the moment, but yeah. it's awful. Yeah. It's not my cup of tea at all. So yeah, as much as I know Barry's the original and everybody likes Barry and stuff like that, um, Wally was always my flash. And I think they did Wally dirty bringing, yeah. bringing him back. His whole family has powers now and his yeah. wife had powers for a while. It's like, come on, you know. Yeah. All right, you ready for my question? Yeah. All right. Do you like comics restarting at number one, you know, when they do reboots, or do you wish they would just keep the legacy numbers going? I think they should do both, Efren. Um, my, my personal preference, if I'm being really honest, is I like the history of it, so I think it should be the legacy numbers, but I completely understand how off-putting that is to a new reader going to pick up, I don't know, Spider-Man 648 or something like that, um, of Volume 3 or whatever it may be, um, and how off-putting that can be. And also, we know, we know, don't we, that issue ones, you always get a sales boost, so it yeah. brings people into the comics. Um, so for me, I kind of don't mind a, a, a lower issue number, but then in a shield or in brackets or whatever, the legacy number, to be honest. I just like legacy numbers. I mean, when it starts getting closer to when it has at 900, then they make a bunch of sales. Yeah. You know, when, when Spider-Man, I don't think it's gotten to a thousand yet, but it's probably getting close. You know, I'm sure they're going to make a big deal about it. So me, I can see why they do it. Like you said, because it boosts sales, you know, for all the newer, you know, 
reader, so to speak. Yeah. But me, I just like the old legacy numbers. I just see, you know, 999. I went, oh my God, a thousand's next. You know, I can't yeah. believe a thousand, you know. I mean, they made well, such that, a big deal about it with Superman and Batman. Yeah, yeah. What I don't like is where they seem to do a new volume every 12 issues or something. So you end up yeah. on like volume eight, issue three. That that does me head in. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I what do you think of the point numbers every now and then, especially Marvel, they do like a, a point one or yeah. point two. Like, oh, yeah. God, come on, yeah. guys. Does that count as yeah. a legacy number or not? You know, it's oh, like, yeah. I don't know. But uh, we got Ian joining us. Thank you so much. Hi, Ian. And uh, let me see, we got Hector's here. I don't think they should do legacy numbers. It's it's a bit of it's a bit of cheating. Oh, okay. And uh, we have Dead Man. DC's already stopped putting the legacy numbers on the books. I didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, I noticed um, Dead Man. I don't know if it's three hundred or four hundred or what. But the latest Nightwing issue, they're making a big celebration about that being his three hundredth issue or something. Um, they're always going to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. a good comic actually. It's a decent yeah, read. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dead Dead Man's has jumped in. Yeah. Just a catch yeah. penny for you may read these. Sometimes I get confused with just the a word. catch penny for them. Nightwing <laughs> 113 will be 300, and Catwoman will be on 300 and a few issues. Wonder if they will go there. Nightwing did, I think. I think it was, I'm sure it was a celebration issue. I think. Okay, sure. what's a catch penny? Just a cat, catch penny. I think you just I mean just to catch, just to kind okay. of um, get money from it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Sometimes these terms, that's, like, uh, it just goes right over my head, so I stumbled over them, you know, so. That's okay. a, um, an interesting question for the future, Efren, actually. Yeah. What do we think about villain-based books? I cannot believe Catwoman is up to issue 300. I mean, I just don't see the appeal to that at all, myself, personally. But it's interesting yeah. that we've got a lot of books based on villains now, you know, Penguin and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, good point. Yeah. If I was just saying uh, cash grab, maybe it's yeah. cash grab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's what it was. Make money from it. Okay. If you see me like look, staring at a question or from you guys, I go, what are they saying exactly? So uh, let me see right here. Where are we? Uh, Eight people watching, ladies and gents, please hit that thumbs up and make sure you follow Efren and like his, his Passpoint channel, please. And I think uh, you're up next. Which character would you bring? That's your question, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. which you mean like a character that's not around right now or yeah so which which character that's not been either so either a character that's dead and has been dead for a while or a character that we just don't see much of anymore so like like dead man said earlier metal men or whatever right. which character would you bring back so why is you thinking efren um i've got two because i'm greedy like that um and the both marvel characters um i would bring back from the dead um Eric, who was Thunderstrike back in, in my heyday of reading Marvel oh, comics. Oh, good choice. I used so to love that. Wow. That's a he had a, a fantastic run yeah. where basically Thor um, did, well, died. So Eric became Thor for a while. And then when Thor came back, he got the the, uh, the Thunderstrike mace and became his own character. And I think it was only 12 issues or something, but I loved that story. And to be fair, it was a beautiful end because he sacrificed himself and Thor had to kill him in the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoy that character. Um, he, he was my kind of version of Thor. And another one, and I, I never know how to pronounce his name, but the original Wendell Vaughn, who was Quasar. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, not so, around still? Well, he kind of, he comes and goes. He came back when they did the whole Cosmic Adventures a while ago, and then I think he died. And then the, the bracelets have been passed on to a few different characters since. So I don't think he's is actually around at the moment um just as a side note just to, just whilst you're thinking i think sometimes when they do this poorly though it irritates us so there's a, a series out at the moment um a night thrasher series yes now new warriors was one of my favorite yeah. series back yeah. in the day yeah and they've brought night thrasher back and they brought one of the new warrior characters who became an avenger a guy called rage Yes. They brought him back and they've totally, at the moment, unless they're going to do a, a switch, at the moment, they've got him as a real kind of bad guy. Uh -huh. um, so it's just, yeah, I, I wish they hadn't brought these characters back because I don't think they're doing them justice. Um, if I'm talking mainstream Marvel character and he's around, but he's not in the forefront. And, and to me, it's Hawkeye. I'm talking about the original Hawkeye, Clint Barton. And yeah. I'm talking about his original costume. Yeah. 
I mean, I know they switched them to, to costume more modern, you know, because of the movie and stuff like that. But that's always been one of my favorite characters, these street level characters. And yeah. he shows up every now and then, but I would like to see him in the Avengers. Yeah. To me, he was almost like the heart and soul because he was a normal guy. Yeah. He didn't have any superpowers, you know. So I always wish they would bring him back on the Avengers, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be very like cool. Character, you know. But let's look at the comments, see what people have to say. Um, let me see here. Is this one um, Anomatopoeia? Yeah. One of my dreams. Is- one of my favorite DC villains. We haven't seen him in years. What powers does he have? So yeah. that's the guy who I don't think he has powers. I mean, James Keep is right. I don't think he's got powers as such, but he's like a he's like a um, bounty hunter, serial killer, or whatever. But this is the okay. guy who's got a black costume with like white circles on, and he on a matter appear, I think means basically he makes the sound effects. So like if he if he because he first appeared in Green Arrow, if he snaps an arrow, he'll say snap. Do you know when he snaps mm-hmm. it? If he shoots a gun, he shouts bang, bang, kind of thing. <laughs> I got to check um, him out now. <laughs> yeah, but I think I read him in Green Arrow and really liked him in that. But then I think he was in some Batman books that James really likes. Um, cool. All right, let's see what uh, Fuzzy has to say. I'm really looking forward to the new Dick Tracy comic for some reason. Yeah, oh, wow, too. I didn't even know it's coming out. I hope it's good. Yeah. I would also like a modern Lone Ranger reboot, a modern-day Western-type comic. Is Dick Tracy going to be modern, or is it going to be back in the day? Back in the day, I think. Oh. Um you just prompting us there, Fuzzy. I haven't read Lone Ranger for ages, but yeah. also uh, Zorro. I used to love Zorro. Yeah. I don't know if that's still a thing. I don't know if there's still a Zorro book out there. I think I see them every now and then in the previews, you know. Yeah. So, uh, I see loved, the the anti- loved the Anthony Banderos movies. I think they did oh, yeah, yeah. Like the original ones were really good, yeah. yeah. Uh, he likes to see Alpha Fight. They keep coming back all the time, yeah. though. Keep you know? trying, don't they? Yeah. Keep trying. I do like Puck. Yeah. Gamma Flight was pretty cool. They had that out yeah. not so long ago. Oh, that was good too. That that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Sasquatch, I think, was in that. And yeah. Yeah. Let's see what Deadman okay. has to say. If I have worked it out correctly, Volume Five, Number Sixty Six, will be oh gosh, will be wow. Catwoman Number Three Three Hundred. Dang. Wow. Volume Five, Number Sixty Seven. Jeez. Yeah. Let's see here, got Fuzzy. Uh, I'm quite enjoying Night Thrasher so far, but I really, but I've never read it in the past. Still mm-hmm. new to me. Okay. I'm not a fan of the artwork, Fuzzy. Do you like the art inside it? I think it's, I don't know. I, don't yeah, know. I, I, I liked it when I heard he was coming back because I did like the yeah. new orders when, when they first came out. You know, uh, James says, no power is just really skilled, brutal hit, man. Yeah, Dead man says, Fuzzy, I saw that Dick Tracy. Looking forward to it. Okay, you got to check it out. Uh, well, Jonah, Jonah Hex book. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And uh, James, Batman Cacophony by Kevin Smith. He's the main villain. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Fuzzy says there's a new Zorro book out just now. All right, oh, there you okay. go. I'll check that yeah. out. And it uh, looks like there was a recent uh, Zorro miniseries. Excellent. I shall check that out. That was a good question. Yeah. Got a lot of answer for that one. And, um, okay, here's mine. With all the reiterations of Spider People, do you wish it would end? I mean, we just got Spider Boy recently. And then the edge of Spider-Verse, there's so many characters just popping out left and right. They had a T-Rex Spider-Man. Do you think enough's enough, or do you still think it's endless? So this is really interesting, Ephraim, because this is very nearly a question I posed, uh, and then I reworded it to the storyline question. Okay. Um, because I, I'm bored of it now, and I, I, there are some good characters still coming out of it. The recent, I can't remember what the series is, Edge of Spider-Verse or whatever, had like a Weapon X version of Spider-Man, which was quite interesting. I, quite I haven't read it yet, yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. Um. But I have to say, I think this is the same as most of the the big characters at the moment. I think the more you try and replicate that character in different forms, whether that's making a spider girl from a spider man or or whatever it may be, you dilute the main character. Yeah. Um, And I think with the original Spider-Verse or the original Spider-Man, having Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Gwen, I think, Ghost Spider and Miles... That, that that's pretty cool you know but yeah. now we're getting into like you say spider t-rex spider monkey spider ham i suppose has always been around it, it, it's <laughs> it's you know it's just for me it's too much now and it's a bit it makes spider-man less unique yeah i i agree with you but but every now and then we get that miles morales and every now and then we get that yeah. spider gwen and every now and then we get silk yeah you know, those are they are compelling characters. So um, I'm iffy on that one. I think for now they should stop. 
yeah. you know, but they, you know, and you never know, you know, this spider boy, people thought he'd be done by now, but he's not. And I've been reading his call books and they it's are good interesting. Character. It's, it's a good character. character. It is interesting. Yeah. So that's a tough one. Gosh, my mind says stop, but my heart says keep on going. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, let's take a look at the comments for this one here. Uh, let me see. James says uh, too many spider people. There James you go. is still too salty yeah. after Madam Web. He's still salty after Madam Web. <laughs> so yes, it's going too far now. Too many to follow. See, I agree, but I mean, like I said, I have I have been reading Spider Boy, and it is a compelling storyline. Yeah, so, oh, that's a tough one. I'm a fan of the old anthology kind of series, so I'm I'm quite happy if you've got your main Spider titles. Yeah, and then you've got one book, which is the kind of the you know, the, the Edge of Spider-Verse or whatever, where you've got different characters or different appearances in that. Just keep them in that small kind of sh short stories. But I think they should give Edge of Spider-Verse series a break. It seems yeah. it's coming out all the time now. When it first yeah. came out, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, even they yeah. brought back Doc Ock as Spider-Man, you know, yeah. all the Spider-Man. That was a cool, but now they're just doing it. Like, it seems like it hasn't ended. You know, it's still, it's still ongoing. Uh, let's see here. We got one from Dead Man. Not as bad as Spidey, but there are too many Robins. Wow, too many Robins and too many Spider Man, Spider Man, uh, Spider Man, Superman style people. Yeah, but Superman has adopted two kids that have powers. You know, Ab so. so absolutely agree with the Superman. Yeah, Dead Man. So I got back into reading Superman six months or so when they did the relaunch or whatever, and I remember enjoying Superman standalone issues, and then I picked one book up. And I think he had, there was about eight people in yeah. his and Lois's house. So there was Superman, there was Steel, there was Steel's daughter in an outfit. There was John Kent. Yeah, the clone. Um, there was the yeah, there was the clone um, version. Yeah. There was the 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 kid that's grown up version. I think there was a Chinese Superman as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, the two adopted kids that he's got. Yeah. Or and Super Crypto, Girl. Supergirl. Yeah. It was like, how weird, man! It's getting. Yeah, that's a good one. I never thought about that. Superman, his uniqueness, it was just him. Yeah. And he's so dang powerful. You know, yeah, that's that's something they should cut out. You know, get rid of the family. And you know, uh, let me see here. We got one from uh Fuzzy. They're not all aimed at us though. That's correct. Yeah, I'm sure younger readers love all the um iterations of the spider characters. Yep, that's for sure. And you know, all the toy figures. You know? It's really bottom line. It sells figures, doesn't it? it? Sells toys and different cartoons and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. This is a good point by Ian. Um, it's like the Loki series. Yeah? yeah, so many of them. You know. So, all right, we're almost at the end. Let me see what else we got here. Oh the gosh, <laughs> this is yours. Uh, you want to read it? Yeah. Is AI the future of comics? So this is on the back of. <sighs> I've obviously been aware of the rise in AI kind of stuff over the last year or two. But I think I must have just blanked a lot of it out and I hadn't realised we got to the point now where you've got AI writing people's dissertations for university courses and things like that or, or penning entire series and stuff. And it kind of came to my f mind most with this. You'll have seen all this Willy, um, sorry, Willy Wonka stuff in Scotland, Efren. Have you seen all that? Oh, yeah. That, uh, exactly. Yeah, so it yeah. turns out that the guy that kind of ran that published six AI written books on Amazon the wow. year before and then all of the scripts for this Woolies Wonderland thing were all AI as well and it's I'm surprised if it hasn't happened already but I guess it's only a matter of time before someone says well let's try AI writing a few comic books for Marvel or something like that Gosh. and punching in the, the information so yeah so I get to ask my question to you is AI going to be the future of comics how long is it before we're getting a completely drawn and written AI comic well my heart hopes no you know because i think that people who write comics and draw comics for the most part it's, it's a passion of theirs you know like mm -hmm. james tinney and the way he writes you know so i hope not but i'm it's probably gonna creep in there you know mm -hmm. i can see you know if they're trying to save money you know by just doing it from ai you know but if if that whenever it comes to that i can honestly say i don't think i'm gonna buy those books if if they have it this is ai you know driven book or something like that you know and our work i just may say i'm done you know i'm yeah. not going to read this anymore you know so my heart hopes it doesn't happen but I'm, in my head and my brain i think it's going to happen it's interesting because i think there's been a lot of focus and a lot of talk hasn't there about AI, the use of ai in artwork yeah. and in particular i don't know if you saw that recent thing with the todd mcfarlane 
draw spawn character competition. And oh, yes, winner, I heard about it. Yeah. yeah, the winner was actually an AI created image, which is ridiculous. So yeah. there's been a lot of focus on artwork, but I guess I'm interested in AI, AI written books. You know, it'd be really interesting to see if we're suddenly going to get a, a Spider-Man written by AI to see what that pumps out. So, yeah. but I'm with you. Um, I think I would, bo- well, I know I would boycott that. I think I don't think I'd be reading it. I'd be interested, mind. I have to say, but I would wouldn't be reading it. Even um, I see I'm at you know to each his own, but I see a lot of people post um, AI generated artwork on Instagram, and I mean it, it looks great, but to me, I mean it's just like all you have to do is I mean, I've never done it, so I'm assuming just put in a word and or phrases words, and then it draws it out for you. Yeah, um, I just you know I had like, a, for me. I had a go of it when um, it kind of started to get popular. Was it last year or something? Actually, it might have been for Fuzzy. I think I did a um, I did an image of fuzzy or something i put in a load of things prompts mm-hmm. to bring up an image of what i thought fuzzy would look like or something <laughs> I can share it on the show. and it's weird it, you just literally put prompts in and it creates something yeah um but yeah just not 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 for me i have to say like i said i'm old-fashioned to me that's almost like the easy way out you know yeah. doing that you know so but yeah. let's see what the comments say on this uh bring it up here uh Uh, let me see here from Ian. No, I hope not just for the sake of all the artists. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a question here from Kenny Lang. Thanks for joining us. Is there any character you think could use? We answered that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we did earlier in the show, Kenny. Go yeah. go back and rewatch, bud. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll ask that exact question, mate. So great minds think alike. Yep. Thanks for the question, though. And Fuzzy, when Marvel used AF for the opening titles of Secret Invasion. I forgot about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that, mate. They made a big deal about it too, you know. So that was a real interesting move of Marvel to do that, mind. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Was... It's coming. It's not going to stop. Yeah. You know. So we'll hope for the best. Okay, so we are down to our final two questions, and these are any type of question. These last two questions, Peter. You know, we can ask any questions. It doesn't have to be comic book or entertainment related. And my question. And it can't be a beer, okay? It's got to be a different type of alcohol. So what is your favorite alcoholic drink? Again, <laughs> again, I've got, I've got, well, I've got three. I've got three. Um, <laughs> so I am, I am a, not a wuss. I'm not, a, I wouldn't say I'm a wuss when it comes to alcoholic drink, drinks, everyone. But I have to say I do like, like a fruity cocktail and things like that more than yeah. say a pint of lager or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had Guinness when I was over in Ireland with James. That was really nice. But if I was, say me and you were going out on a hot San Diego night to just sit and chill, mm-hmm. I would be reaching probably for a classical mojito. I do like a mojito. My daughter loves um, mojito. So. Loves a mojito. And I tell you where, I tell you where I'd never had a mojito before. Um, but there was a TV show with um oh man reminders the chin who's the guy who plays from evil dead from what <gasps> from evil dead all the evil dead movies oh Brain, gosh, brain's I, gone blank i mean i know who you're talking about yeah um but he was in a tv show called burn notice yes ever. in every episode that's what he was drinking a mojito okay um so so yeah, bruce campbell thank you james for yeah, not having yeah. your brain there so yeah so i would be going for and, and so he used to drink one in every episode of that, so I got one when I went out somewhere and just loved it, fell in love. So yeah, a mojito um, is definitely one of my go-tos. I love a Long Island iced tea. Oh. I think that's really nice. Um, and also, a friend of mine introduced us to a drink that I've never been able to buy anywhere, but she makes it. Something called a Gatsby. Never heard of it. I had a Gatsby. Yeah, no. couldn't tell you what's in it, but it's got ginger ale in it, I think, Gin- like a ginger beer and things, and that's a really refreshing, really nice drink. Love that. No, you took my answer at the very end. It was <laughs> Long Island iced tea. I just love that drink, man. I just, I just can drink it. I can hardly ever taste the alcohol in that drink for some reason. That's the danger of it. That's the danger yeah, of a Long exactly. Island iced tea, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. Mine would yeah, be a Long Island iced tea, but if we, if it was a beer, hands down for me, it would be a Corona with a with a piece of lime in it. Yeah, I love nice. Corona beer. You know, so. I used to like, um, Fost, not Fost, uh, Labatt's ice. I used to like that. Um, or I'm a fan of what's the tequila beer that you have lime in as well? Is that um, uh, margarita? No, no, no it's, a, it's a bottled beer. Um, oh, okay. You get, you get lime in it, and it's kind of a tequila based. Hmm. Desperado, Desperado. Oh, okay. I quite yeah, like yeah. a Desperado. 
Uh, this is uh, the previous question uh, from James. He has an answer. I think AI can be a real helpful tool, but straight up having AI do everything is ridiculous. You have to hundred yeah. percent confirm. And um, James says, I can confirm Peter is in fact the worst. How I dare mean, you? I'll James, you. thought bubble hangovers. I think you'll find I was downstairs having breakfast whilst you were still lying in bed crying. <laughs> uh, let me see here. You have Ian it says, Jack Daniels and Coke in a sports direct mug. Peter will do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of those great big sports, sports direct mugs. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Dead Man says, King Fisher or Tiger Beer in the King Indian Fisher's restaurant. Never had that. <laughs> One drink kind of classic over here, King, Kingfisher in, in Indian restaurants is nice. IPAs, I just cannot stand. I just, my cousin's really big into IPAs, and I had one, and I said, nope, that's not for me. Yeah. I just couldn't, didn't like it at all. I don't like heavy drinks that kind of make you feel bloated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that kind of stuff. You ready for the last question of the day? Yep. Okay. God, I forgot Peter. what it was. I forgot what I wrote. <laughs> you, can, you can read this, but I'm not. This is yours, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst thing you've ever put in your mouth in my mouth what's okay, the worst I, thing you've I ever know, stuck in your mouth actually i have my answer already mm -hmm. um my mom when uh i used to you know live in san francisco she used to you know hispanic food i used to eat all the time obviously and i used to love it but she used to make liver oh liver, and just liver the onions. smell of it was just rep i was like oh my god this is terrible and I used to, she used to make me try to eat it, but it tasted like dirt to me. And she just used to make it every now and then. Have you ever had liver, man? I just yeah, yeah, spit yeah. it out. I go, how could somebody eat this? So that would be the worst type of so food. So liver used to be a kind of a stable meal um, for school dinners back back in the UK, back in the, wow. like the late 80s. So um, you would normally get liver and onions because it was yeah. cheap meat. And yeah, it, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Nope. Um, liver patty is nice, and James just said, yeah, but but liver, chunks of liver, no. Um, for me, the the worst thing I've ever probably tried is, I remember I was in on holiday in Bulgaria. And, oh, wow. Um, I'd ordered something in this restaurant, and Lorna, my wife, had said to us, oh, look, they do Caesar salad sandwiches. I love Caesar salad. So I was like, all right, I've never had a Caesar salad sandwich before, so I'll order that. So we ordered that. And as the wait I was walking towards were, you could see people kind of turning and looking at the plate. And I thought, oh, this this is not good. And when it got to it, the smell was, um, it smelled like rotten meat. And it, it hadn't been Caesar salad. It had been some, their spelling of acacia or something like that. And basically it was fermented spiced horse meat. Oh, wow. So it was a horse meat sandwich. So I did have a little nibble just to try, just to see I've had it. But it was revolting. It was like eating rotten meat. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. So yeah, um, so so not something, hmm. not something I would recommend eating. Uh, this is a uh, Hector's from the, the previous question about a uh, drink. And then we'll go on to the other one. It says old fashioned for me, please. Cool. Old, old fashioned is that um, a whiskey based drink, Hector? I think I think I might have I had one so. them before. Yeah. 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 Remind us what's in an old fashioned. Uh, let me see. We got Ian here says uh, a ghost chili. Oh, never. Yeah. I will never eat that. I, I just yeah. think because of my age, it may just put me over, you know, but <laughs> nah. I eat jalapenos. That's about it, you know, for, you know, hotness, but a hot chili, I think it would just do too much to me, man. So have uh, you ever it, had tripe, Efren? Oh, you know what? I was about to mention um, in, you know, for Hispanic people, I'm not sure if you know this, but if you have a hangover, you're supposed to eat uh, menudo or tripe soup it says it's supposed to be good for hangovers my mom used to make it all the time and i love tripe yeah oh, but it's soup God. they call it menudo here it's tripe and it's, uh, my daughter likes it too it's good man if you have a hangover drink menudo i'm telling yeah. you it's, it's the texture you. man it's the texture it's just not, not i'm just used to it you know like i said I grew up with it i never questioned it my mom used to make cow tongue and uh you know i used to eat that it was nice and chewy i used to like eating cow tongue you know. My um, my uncle, when he used to come come over, used to get a can of tongue, and it was literally you'd open the tin, and it was a huge tongue. Just oh it gosh. was like a full, and you used to slice it. Revolting. Yeah, revolting. yeah my mom used to slice the, the cow tongue, and it, and it tasted good, so I never questioned it. You know? Yeah. Uh, let me see. We hear James says he loves liver pate. Yeah, me too. I never right. tasted it. Does it taste like liver or no? Patty, or? I love patty, um, but yeah, liver, okay. uh, duck liver patty normally is very nice. Yeah. 
Uh, we got Hector here. It says, I used to chew the wax mustaches, the wax mustaches oh, that were sold at the store for Halloween, I think. I, I could never that. cope with them, Hector, because they've got that <laughs> weird, the, the stuff to stick them in your nose used to yeah. always really hurt. Do you know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I can't say I ever tried eating one. Like, I can't. Oh my gosh, all these uh, dead man. It says, Your calves liver soaked in milk, dried and then grilled is lovely. Wow. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. James says, when I was eight, I licked a, a rusted battery. Instant regret. <laughs> that explains <laughs> really? a lot, James. That, yeah. Okay, but if, okay, Fuzzy, I think we all think this. Uh, breast milk, I don't remember why. <laughs> so, true, st <laughs> true story. <laughs> um, have you heard of um, summer fruit pudding, Efren? No. So, it's a, it's a, again, it's a revolting dessert. It's a, um, it's a dessert that you make using bread and bits okay. of fruit and you soak it in milk and it's like a milky dessert and it's it's for you can give it to kids because it becomes just like a pulp you know okay. so it's a good little meal for young children to have um <laughs> should be telling you this i remember my dad trying some of the summer pudding that my wife had made and then my wife suddenly realized that she'd made it with breast milk for oh for God. the kids <laughs> Revolting. I never tried it. I never tried it. So in El Salvador, um, it, I've tried eating this, um, but it, they eat a delicacy that they like to eat is uh, turtle eggs. And the turtle, turtle eggs, yes, they're turtle eggs, but they, it, it's been outlawed there because, you know, they said they make, you know there's yeah. not enough left them. But you can still get them. And I tried eating them. When, I tried eating it once. The shell is soft. And you just, you know, you peel it yeah. open and then you put like some Tabasco sauce or something, you know, and you just... Yeah eat it you know and you, but I, I couldn't get it down my throat you know it's just it's just like almost like a regular egg you know but it, it's a turtle egg but i have just you, couldn't do it you know have you done things like oysters and things like that i've eaten oysters and i've, I've enjoyed oysters yeah i mean I'll, i don't eat them on a regular basis mm. you know it's a texture thing for me i think i think if it's yeah. like slimy and you know i kind of cope with that sliding down my throat you know what i mean it's have you ever had an escargot I've had it. I've had it once, and I wasn't a big fan. But but yeah. this, the the flavor was nice. Yes. But again, it's just the yep. texture. I couldn't. I yeah. couldn't cope with. You know, a bit like uh, I don't know if you get them where you are, but my grand, I used to always love to go to Whitley Bay White uh, Lighthouse, and would get cockles from the the beach. So you would um, you'd buy them from the vans, and it was. Have you ever heard, had a cockle? So these what like is it the, a cockle. So the kind of sea creatures, but the tiny little shells, a bit like a snail. And okay. winkles, cockles and winkles, I think they're called. Tiny little shell, and you'd get a pin and kind of pull out this, what looked like a great big bogey. Do you know what okay. I mean? And you'd eat that, and there would be crunching of sand and salt and bleh, horrible. Even, yeah. Wow, it doesn't even sound good. You know? No, no. Uh, let me see, Dead Man here says, uh, I had a packet of those ever hotter peanuts, but didn't have the last two. The burn lasted a few days. Dang. Oof. Uh, let me see here. Ian says fried egg sandwich for hangovers. Really? Yeah, good fried okay. egg sandwich. I uh, never heard of that. Uh, let me see here. Uh, texture gives me every time texture and smells. I can't I'm, do it. I'm yeah. the same fuzzy. It's the texture. It's yeah. the feeling. It's just not. Uh, yeah, like I said, the smell of uh, liver. Man, I was like, oh my god. I, even that, I just used to run away. You know. Yeah. But got one more from Dead Man. Love snails, but mainly taste the garlic they're cooked in. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's it. So that's the last I've, question for today. I've never tried. Sorry, Efren. And yeah. we'll, because we'll, you're you're coming over to spend some time with us, and we're going to go down London. A, a classic London treat is um, jellied eel, and I've never tried that. But again, I think that's a one that I I don't think I'd be able to eat. So, have you heard of jelly jellied eels? No. So jelly. So you know what an eel is? A grip. Yes. It's like a water. Yeah. So it's them cut into chunks. And then put in some kind of clear jelly liquid and preserved in the jelly. So you get this kind of this gungy slime base. I'm not selling it, but it's a it's a kind of a delicacy in London. So we'll we'll you can try that when we're down there. We'll watch, we'll film it for you. I had sea urchin once and that was very slimy. I didn't yeah. really like it. Have you ever had haggis? Yeah, yeah, I've had haggis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Haggis is a, so haggis is a bit like. Have you heard of black pudding? No. <laughs> black pudding. I mean, if Fuzzy's still in, you'll be getting excited. All these these kind of haggis and things like that. And um, black pudding 
is um, blood sausage, I think you might call it in America. Okay. Blood. So it's basically, it's kind of barley and things like that. But it's it's got, it's formed of pig's blood. So it's like a really dark black looking thing with chunks of fat and things in it. Um, so a, a, a black pudding in a haggis, when you think about what they're made of and what's in them, it's an immediate turn off for me. But actually, when you eat them, they taste lovely, and it's it's a nice flavour and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I don't mind haggis. If I if I try and get out my head that it's a stomach or whatever, yeah, do you know what I mean. It it the flavour and everything is quite quite nice. Uh, we got a couple of more comments here. This is an interesting topic. Uh, we have here uh, Ian Carter. Oh, Cardinal. I love a pickled, pickled egg. egg. Have you ever had a pickled egg? You're not talking about um, egg um, devil eggs, right? No. No, I don't, are, no. I don't think so. So, no. quite often a pub snack in the UK or, or on the bars, you'll find a great big jar of pickled eggs. Okay, and it's I, basically I, I, pickle juice, and it's an yeah. egg soaked in that for yep. a while. I like a pickled egg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. We have another one from Dead Man. Eel jelly is the juice from the eels, Peter. Oh, <laughs> pork scratchings. You ever had a pork scratching? Are you asking me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You ever had a pork scratching? No. <laughs> pork rinds, I think you might call them. Pork oh, pork rinds. rinds. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah I love pork yeah. rinds. Yes. Yeah. I eat them all. You know, they have them here. You know, I, yeah. I buy them on a regular basis. Uh, James Keegan in Ireland, we have white pudding with no blood. Okay. Okay. And uh, Fuzzy says, Haggis is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's nice. So, we all done? I think that's the last yeah. question. So this is our monthly show where we ask questions and we ask, you know, Peter and I come on and hopefully James will be coming on with us next time. You know, maybe we'll, we'll do three questions each, you know, keep it simple. But until next time, everybody, if you like what you see, you know what you got to do, hit that like, subscribe and notification button. Oh, Peter, what's coming up on your channel? Um, I've got a few videos out, but I, I can't remember what they are from. Um, but then we'll have Saturday night live. I'm not going to do a live show on Monday night this week because it's bank holiday Monday over here, um, Easter Monday. So we're going to have that that off. Um, but we'll be doing, pro- I'll probably, you know what I'm like, we'll be doing yeah. something else during the week, I'm sure. We'll add some yeah. shows in next week. You have the, uh, on uh, One Good Scare, you have the Ghostbusters. Um, yeah, you know. that was fun. So yeah. we, we've done that. the Ghostbusters yeah. review. That's over on One Good Scare. And and um, we've got stuff on one good scare i think pretty much every night so we've got an immaculate review coming out i have to say james is beavering away on all these he's doing all the hard hard work yeah. i'm just there as the talent do you know what i mean if i'm there as the <laughs> entertainment and james does yeah. all the the, uh, the brilliant editing but we've got immaculate review coming out we've got um late night with the devil coming out which is superb um and then we'll also have our um i'll be right back which is the omen and i think that's going out on saturday okay. So, yeah, lots going on. And please, if I can just beg anybody that's still watching, anybody that's not following One Good Scare, I think we're only a couple of subs away from the 200 mark. Nice. So it would be lovely to get 200. So please, please do go check out the channel and give that a sub. So we have a comment here from that dead man. Ephraim still has his teeth, so pork scratchings no. <laughs> <laughs> and you are welcome, uh, Fuzzy. Uh, let me see here. We have Ed Vicks. Hey, sorry, missed you. We'll have to catch a rewind. Yep, thanks. And Cheers, uh, <laughs> Dead Man, uh, good show. Cheers, guys. So on Saturday and Friday and probably Sunday, I'm going to be in Anaheim. Um, I'm going to be at WonderCon. So I'll be going live on Instagram probably all three days. And hopefully on Saturday uh, on Peter's show, I'll be doing a quick little segment, you know, uh, you know, my reporting from uh, a Comic-Con. But until next time, everybody, be safe, take care, and see you next time.